In this video, we share 10 things that you need to know about the Blue Healer. Let's start with the grooming of the Blue Healer. The coat of this dog protects it from both hot and cold weather. The coat is easy to maintain and requires only occasional grooming with a bristle brush. One with strong bristles, not soft ones. It is recommended not to bathe this dog unless it is absolutely necessary. Shedding occurs twice a year. Now let's look at the coat of the Blue Healer. The outdoorsy dogs come in two colors, red and blue. The coats can either be speckled or mottled. Speckled coats are light spots on a dark background, while the mottled are an inverse. Regardless of color pattern, all the dogs have water-resistant double coats. The raincoat-like fur allows water to bead and glide right off, keeping the pup mostly dry and happy. Next, the Blue Healer needs a lot of exercise. This breed requires a lot of exercise. A short stroll and spending time in the park playing fetch is just not enough. It needs a long, brisk walk. Jogs are even better, and this dog makes an excellent jogging companion. It is not suited for apartment living. Rather, it needs a big yard to run around. It does better in a rural setting than a city or urban area. The number seven most interesting fact about the Blue Healer is that they are survivors. In 2009, an Australian cattle dog named Sophie lived through the ultimate canine survival tale. While on a boat with her family off the coast of Queensland, Australia, the dog was thrown off while the craft hit a rough wave. The resilient pup swam five miles back to shore and ended up on St. Bees Island, an island inhabited mostly by wild horses Sophie managed to stay alive by hunting feral goats. Eventually she was nabbed by a ranger and reunited with her family. Blue healers are incredibly resourceful and survivors. Number six, blue healers are white puppies. It can take a number of weeks, but eventually their red or blue coat coloring will emerge. This makes them very unique when they're puppies, and it gives you something to look forward to when they turn either red or blue. At number five, we look at the blue healers temperament. This breed is not a pack dog and prefers to be independent, although it can socialize with other dogs if taught from an early age. The Blue Healer is an independent, intelligent, and hardworking dog. Due to its sharp and alert mind and high levels of energy, it needs to be engaged in some task and needs to be given a job. It is a good, obedient dog, and hence it needs mental and physical activity like learning training commands and tricks going for runs, etc. A bored dog may resort to barking and may even experience behavioral problems.
The number four fact is unwanted herding of the blue healer. Blue healer dogs are bred to herd, so it's only natural for them to look for things in the home that they can corral when cows aren't an option. They need to be kept busy or the dog will get restless and look for their own activities like digging or tearing into furniture. In the field, blue healers herd by nipping at their targets. So they have a natural tendency to bite, even in play. Number three, we look at the blue healer's appearance. The blue healer has a compact body that is sturdy and has well-developed muscles. This body structure gives the dog agility and strength. The body should be slightly longer than it is tall. The ratio of height to the length must be around nine to 10. The eyes of the dog are dark brown in color and overly shaped. The skull is broad, the ears are wide set, small to medium sized and must be upright when the dog is alert. The muzzle is medium sized, the tail is set neither too high nor too low and is slightly curved. Next, we look at the origin of the blue healer. The precursors to the modern blue healer were first introduced by an Englishman, Thomas Hall, around 1840. Hall's family had numerous cattle stations spread over many areas, and he needed to herd thousands of cattle over many miles every day. The Australian dogs were incapable of achieving this task. The colonial dogs, known as Smithfields, were not very useful either. They belonged to breeds designed to herd sheep over short distances. Hall tried to remedy this problem by importing several cattle droving dogs from his home country of Northumberland. After having limited success with the British breeds, he then bred the imported dogs with an Australian wild dog breed known as the Dingo. Number one interesting fact is that Blue Healer is Australia's dog. When early settlers came to Australia, they brought livestock and sheep dog like dogs called Smithfields to help them herd. These city dogs were not quite cutting it in the unforgiving Australian outback. Their thick coat slowed them down, and farmers complained about their strong bite and loud barking. A man named Timmins aimed to create a silent herd dog and bred them to be the Timmins Biters. Unfortunately, the dog took their name to heart and farmers found the dog would kill the calves when not properly supervised. It would take years before the ideal herding dog was perfected in the country. This was the Blue Healer. Perfect size, perfect weight, perfect temperament, and knew how to get the job done. We hope you've enjoyed this video of the super popular and awesome Blue Healer. For more dog videos, please subscribe.